Okay, we're going to start putting some clothes on the model, which we will then pose. If you don't have a model, I do have a video of how to create a model with various tools. Um, but if you have your own, you can use that one as well. I'm going to do it a couple of different ways, and then we will try posing the model with some clothes on. And I will use this particular model for that part, which is a model designed by my brother for Skyrim. He asked me to make a 3D printed model of it, and this is it. So let's see how we get on. If you don't have your own model, you can follow the link below in which I share a video showing three easy ways to create a model for Blender. Now the first way we're going to do this is the simplest and possibly the clunkiest and possibly the least effective. But when you're new and you haven't done it before, this is by far the easiest way to get started. OK, so I've created a Charmorph male model who's got some lovely underwear on and I will want to scale this up because some of the simulations that we're going to use or some of the things we're going to do don't work so well if the model is too small and this is tiny. So I will scale it up by selecting the model, pressing S and then dragging the mouse until I get the dimensions that I want. You can see the dimensions by pressing the N for the N panel and then clicking item and the dimensions are at the bottom. So the first thing we're going to do is add a cube. So in object mode, add mesh cube. And now we will move it into position by pressing G, Z, and moving up to the sort of crutch area, groin area if you like, and scale it up a bit with S. And move it a bit. And what we're aiming for is a cube that covers half the hip and groin area and we're going to use a mirror modifier to mirror the other side. We should have it just covering the leg completely. We don't want it sticking out too far so just grab faces, scale until it looks a little bit like this. Although maybe this should be a little bit higher so I'm going to grab this face and drag it up to the belly button. OK, we need to be in edit mode to make the legs of these trousers or pants, depending on how you want to call them. And uh, in edit mode, you need to select face mode by pressing 3 or by selecting the face mode icon and the top left and then select a face to extrude. And then we will extrude this face down to an ankle by pressing E and shift Y. We do this so that we don't accidentally extrude backwards or forwards. We just extrude down and to left and to right. Something like this should be OK. So now it seems like a good time to add the mirror modifier. So go into modifiers, select the mirror, and then select with the pipette the model. So what we're going to do now is give these trousers or pants a little bit more shape, make them a little bit closer to the model's outline. So hit this little X-ray icon and then let's start adjusting this so it's a little bit close to the leg. We'll start by creating a loop cut down by the knee. Press Control R and move the mouse and create your loop cut. Now I'll just drag this up to the knee and then we will scale it on the X axis with S and X and bring it in a little bit. Then I will select Edge Mode by pressing 2 or this little icon up here and select the edges and the bottom of the trousers or pants. And then we can press S and scale these in a little bit too. Now there's still a big gap at the top by the hips. So while we're still in Edge Mode, I will select this edge press G and then X to drag it into the hips. OK, the butt is still sticking out here. So we're going to have to go into face mode again by pressing 3. And then we will grab the face and G Y. So basically, we're going to go around the model, adding edge loops as necessary and scaling or dragging in order to get the 
trousers or pants a little bit closer to the model. Uh, so I will speed this up. Now I would say that this bit here is a special case because it has to lean towards the back but be stuck out at the butt. So we're going to need to add an edge loop in here, I think. And there we go. And then we can grab the edge in edge mode of the back and we can pull that forward like so. So this looks about OK for now. So I'll turn X-ray mode off and admire my handiwork. OK, so now is a good time to join these mirrored parts together. You can see there is still a nice gap there. If we go over to the mirror modifier and click clipping, and then I'm going to select all the points where the mirror sections connect. It probably would have been easy to do this right at the start, but here we are. I'm going to select all the vertices and then just drag them together. And the clipping option should stick them together. Looks lovely. So now we're going to delete some of the faces that we don't need. Our goal here is to make a kind of cage around the model. I'll delete the model first to make it easy to see and then we can delete some of the faces we don't want. So we make sure we're in edit mode and we press three to go into face mode and select the faces we don't want. We don't want that one. We'll see that there's some faces on the inside. That's as a result of the mirror modifier. So we'll select those and delete those too. And then we need to delete this one here too. And now I will turn my model back on again. And he's got a very fetching but rather square looking pair of trousers or pants on now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is create a vertex group. Well, actually two vertex groups. A vertex group is a group of vertices that you name and you can refer to them later in modifiers. And we're going to use this one to pin the trousers to the top and we're going to make another vertex group to kind of create a belt area. You will see what I mean in, in a minute. So we start off by selecting the top edges. I'm going to do Alt and right click and that selects the one to the top. And then we hit this little triangle thing here to create a vertex group. And then we click on the plus sign and then I'm going to change the name of this group and then you have to click assign. If you don't click assign you get a vertex group with nothing in it. Now I'll select this second row and create a new vertex group which I will rename as well and then we will assign those. So we have two vertex groups one has just the top edges and the second one has the top edges and the row below. So given we're actually going to be doing some physics simulations on this in a bit, we probably want to give it some more geometry. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier and just increase the subdivisions to say three. And then to demonstrate one of the things with these vertex groups, we're going to add the belt area. So in order to do this, we're going to have to add a shrink wrap modifier. So modifiers and the shrink wrap modifier. OK, in the modifier, we want to select the vertex group, the second one we did, and with the pipette, select the body as a target. This doesn't look very good, so we adjust the strength a little bit holding shift for additional sensitivity and there you go we kind of have a belt area and this will make it easier to add a belt after we've finished all this and now it would seem a pretty good time to fix all these bits of body poking through the trousers or pants so 
using the same method as before, grab some vertices or faces and drag them around until the body is where it's supposed to be. I'll speed this up because it's a little bit dull. Okay, so here we are. This looks uh, a bit better. These trousers are where they're supposed to be. And I think we will get on to the exciting part now. We're going to add some cloth physics and make these trousers or pants into actual cloth. The first thing we need to do is to select the body and add a collision physics thingy to it. Press this physics tab and collision and that's enough. Now anything that will collide with that will recognize it collides with that. So now we have to add a cloth simulation to the trousers. Press cloth. Now up the steps to about eight and then scroll down to the shape area and in this pin group select our first vertex group. And then the other thing you need to do is set collisions, self collisions on. And now if you go down to the these little buttons on the bottom here and press play, your trousers or pants should slowly deform. They'll deform more with more subdivisions and not so much as in this case where we don't probably have enough. I'll maybe have a quick look around to see if it's better than I thought but it isn't so we'll increase our subdivisions so we'll go into the subdivision surface modifier and increase the subdivisions by one we'll make sure our play pointer or whatever it's called is at the beginning and then we will just run the simulation again press play Now you can see more folds appearing and down the bottom of the trousers it, it looks a lot better, more interesting at least. So we'll let this play out until it reaches a point we kind of like. And press pause. This looks better, maybe a bit foldy, but we can fix that now by doing a little bit of sculpting. Nothing too serious, nothing too scary. Let's firstly apply all our modifiers one by one in object mode. Another way of doing this is to select the trousers and then go object convert mesh, which is actually a bit more reliable, though totally unintuitive. So with the trousers selected, let's go into sculpt mode. And all we're really going to do is select the smooth brush, turn the strength down and sort of gently swipe around on these folds. Maybe that's a bit too strong. Turn it down a bit more and you can see they become a little bit more realistic. A little bit down the back. It doesn't matter if the model pokes through a little bit at this stage. So here we go. Brush, brush. And smooth it out a little bit. So this is looking okay. Let's select the snake hook brush to pull out the bits that have poked through the trousers or pants. Just gently grab and pull. Grab and pull. Probably should have a little bit more smoothing there. And I think we'll need this snake brush on the groin area to make it a little more like a groin area. Make that a bit bigger with F and just drag it out a little bit. Let's not go too far. I think that'd be all right. And now we'll go back to the smooth brush. 
and continue doing a bit of smoothing. The hair looks particularly bad, but it should smooth out nicely. Perhaps I'll do a little bit more on the belt here, a bit of smoothing. And then we'll go back into object mode. So here we have a reasonable pair of trousers. You can add details such as pockets with sculpting, or you can add separate objects for pockets and belts, or you can go into edit mode and do normal modeling. Like in this case, I will just make a fly by selecting some vertices and pressing V. This will rip the vertices open and may or may not be good. In this case, it's not. I think we'll say this is good enough and uh, any embellishments is an exercise for the viewer. So let's get on and have a look at another way of making some clothes. What we're going to do here is rather than making the clothes ourselves from a separate object, we're going to extract a shape from the model and make clothes from that. The MB Lab model is not ideal for this because the topology is all over the place, but we'll do it anyway. Let's go into face mode by pressing 3 or selecting the icon. And then we will select some faces that together look a bit like a shirt. All we're really doing is drawing a shirt on top of this model. Using C to just draw all over the model and of course just selecting faces individually. But I'm speeding this up a bit to make it a little bit less boring. And uh, don't forget to do the back and shoulders. Now I'm being quite careful here because I want to get a nice even symmetrical area around the neck. I always forget to do the bits under the arms. I seem to have an extra couple of faces here, so I will deselect them with C and pressing Shift while I paint. Okay, I need to tidy up the shoulder area and to make this hole symmetrical. I'll speed this up, but I just want to be careful and make sure it's exactly symmetrical on both sides. I guess that's what symmetrical means. Well, this bit looks a bit funny, but I'll sort that out in a moment. But basically, we've painted a shirt on our model. And what we're going to do is duplicate this with Shift and D. And this will make a copy of the selected faces, which we'll make into their own object by pressing P and then selecting Selected. And now you can see we have two objects in the outliner. I should probably rename one of them to Shirt unimaginatively. Because we copied the shirt directly out of the model, it will have the collision physics attribute. So we should really turn that off here. The next step is to make the shirt a little bit bigger because it's now exactly the same size of the body. So I'm going to add a displacement modifier. Whoop, that doesn't look so good. Now we adjust the strength uh, hold the shift key to make it smoother and we can adjust it until it's a reasonable size. Whoops, something, whoop, something like that. So that looks pretty good already and you could actually just get away with that for this model, I guess. But I do have these spiky bits I want to get rid of. And I will do that in edit mode and just join some vertices together. I'll do that quickly, but you can stop the video, of course, if you want to see exactly what keystrokes I used. So, there you go. 
done and looking lovely. I do notice this shirt is shade smoothed. Um, we need to have it shaded flat like we do for everything that we're going to 3D print. And now it doesn't look quite as nice, but of course we can fix that with subdivision surfaces. But first I'll just make a little adjustment to the displacement modifier and then I want to apply it. And then as we did in the first example, we were going to add a cloth simulation. Cloth, change the quality to about eight and then scroll down to the shape area. We don't need a pin group this time. We just need to have self collisions on. The shoulders will hold this shirt up. Okay, so we press play down here again. Let's see what happens. Uh, not very much at all. So like before, we're going to need some more geometry. So let's go into the modifiers and add a subdivision surface. I'll make sure this is above the cloth. Otherwise it won't get seen by the simulation. Press play. It will take a bit longer this time. But it is beginning to look a lot better. Let's give it a little bit of time to do its thing. And I think that looks a lot better. Obviously we're going to have to do some smoothing again in sculpt. Particularly, ooh, particularly at those shoulder blades. But that's not a problem. Let's just apply the subdivision surface modifier. And we can apply the cloth modifier here too. Make sure we have the shirt selected. And then off we go back into sculpt mode. And this is basically the same as we did before. Smooth brush, not very high strength. And little strokes here and there not too much but just to smooth out the the worst of the creases but keep the nicest of them again anything poking through the model we'll fix later with the snake hook brush So there you have it. Let's go back into object mode. And if this is going to be a 3D printed model, which it probably is, we're going to have to add a solidify modifier. So add a solidify modifier. Then that looks better and should be perfectly printable. This is perhaps an easier way of doing clothes than as we did it before by making them. But it's not always possible. It depends on the topology of your model and what you want to make. So let's try something else. Usually, of course, you want to start with an A-pose or a T-pose model for clothing. But I want to add a dress to this already pose model. It can be done and can be quite good. I'm going to start by adding a cylinder, which I'm going to scale up with S. And then I'm just going to rotate it with R and grab it and move it into position so that it kind of covers everything. And if I scale on the Z with S and Z and grab and Z, I'll have made a nice hoop, I guess, around her waist. Just put it in nicely. It shouldn't really intersect with the body at all. So I'll just grab on the Z, move it up a bit, scale it a touch. And I think that'll do nearly Let's scale it a bit more. And a bit more. And then just to show how finished it was, we will scale it on the X as well. Now I think we really do have something. So let's go into edit mode and press 3 to go into face mode and select the face at the top and the bottom. And then press X and faces to delete them. Press 1 to go into vertex mode and alt right click to select the top edge loop. And we'll make a vertex group of these by pressing the little triangle plus rename this to something sensible such as pin and assign to assign the vertices. And now we will hop back into object mode 
and we're going to add a shrink wrap modifier. And with the pipette, select the shirt in this case, though maybe the body if you don't have a shirt. And then back in the modifier, select the pin group as a vertex group. And it should do something like this. I'm just going to adjust the offset a little bit so it's outside the body. And uh, yeah, we have something odd like this. Now what we're going to do is select the bottom edge loop and we're going to basically extrude and scale and move things around until we get a kind of skirt shape that kind of covers the body. We will basically press S to scale, E to extrude and G to grab things. We do it a few times so we have some geometry in there. Just extrude and scale, extrude and scale. And sometimes you might need to extrude, scale and use G to grab it, just to move it around. The goal is to cover the legs here, at least to below the knees or something. You don't want any part of the model sticking through what we're producing here. So on the next one, I'll extrude, scale, and then I'll select. Oh, you can see this is too big. So alt right click, scale it a bit. There you go. And then go back to this back leg and select some vertices around it, or at least on this bottom edge like so, and then grab Z just to lift it up over the top of the leg. That looks fine. So the next step, as so often the case, we will add a subdivision surface modifier. And we don't need too many steps. Three will be fine for our, our case. And then we're going to add a cloth simulation. So into the physics tab, cloth up the quality steps to eight or so and then again we will need a pin group because we created a group called pin uh, under the shape pin group select pin and then we'll also want to add the self collisions which is a little bit further down but we do need to check that everything this is going to interact with has a collision attribute set. In this case, we have a shirt in the physics tab collision, body physics tab collision. And now we just press play and watch a skirt slowly develop. I think that looks quite nice on its own. Just press pause. It's a little bit messy at the back there, but we can fix that in sculpting if we want to. But basically, I think this is good. We might add another subdivision surface modifier just to smooth those wrinkles out a little bit more. And there you go. Now, I will apply all these modifiers and this physics simulation by going into Object, Convert, Mesh. I know it's already a mesh, but now it's a mesh with everything applied, as you can see. Of course, you only need to do this if you're gonna 3D print it, but we are, plus a Solidify modifier, of course. Okay, so here's the final method, and probably the correct way, but it is the most irritating. What we're going to do is pretend we are tailors and we're actually going to make cloth and sew it together. Now the best way to do this is if you can get an actual sewing pattern, um, use it as a reference to model something like I did with this trouser leg. But I'm going to assume that we don't have that. So uh, let's do it ourselves. We'll create a plane, though I have moved the 3D cursor with alt-right click. 
mesh plane rotate with R along the X and then I'm gonna scale this up just so it covers a body remember we're making a tailor's pattern here so scale it to include the torso and perhaps the shoulders after all we are making a shirt now this plane needs to move forward a bit because it's chest digging through so grab Y to move it along the Y axis that looks fine now go into edit mode and do control R to make a loop cut vertically down in the middle select the face on the left and delete it now in modifiers we'll add a mirror modifier which will put it back but at least we only need to do half the work now the next part will be easier to do if we use x-ray mode so that we can see the model behind so click up here and that makes everything much clearer so firstly create another loop cut with control R and we'll move this to approximately where the neck hole will be um, that's about right for this one so we can turn x-ray mode back off press 2 to get into edge mode and select this top edge on the right and extrude E and Z just a little bit not too high and this will go over the shoulders when we've finished and now Alt R and a horizontal loop cut which will just drag up to below the arm there and now we can select this edge loop and extrude and pull it down the arm as far as we want to go say here and then I'm going to press R just to rotate that a little bit and maybe S to scale it in probably should have clipping enabled in the mirror modifier so let's quickly do that this is pretty much our sewing pattern but we do need to add some geometry so in face mode 3 select everything with A and then right click and subdivide and I'm going to increase these uh, I don't know this looks okay and there you have it so we are going to have to duplicate this on the back or make a proper tailor's back with darts in it and everything but we're not going to do that so press A to select all the faces and then E Y to extrude it along the Y axis my normals are the wrong way around so A mesh normals flip so we're going to have to remove some faces that we just don't need that don't need to be there and we're going to have to make some sewing threads to sew things together and this is how we're going to do that firstly select faces we don't need and delete them I'm selecting a face here and then doing control and click to select the other faces these faces we can just delete X and delete now the faces I'm going to work on now we need to make into sewing threads so select the faces that you need to make sewing threads out of in the same way and press X only faces so in object mode we have to make sure that our body has collisions on so physics tab press collisions and then on our lovely shirt we'll give it a cloth simulation oh no his shirt fell off better go back to the beginning okay quality steps up to eight again and scroll down to shape and select the sewing tab and increase the sewing force a little bit and then we go down and we add the self collisions again and now let's press play making sure we're at the beginning and here we go Whoa. now 
Now, it's very exciting and it hasn't quite worked on the edge of the sleeves here. So we can do a couple of things to fix that. We can increase the sewing force, which might work. Or in this case, I'm just going to stop this, go into edit mode and I'm going to make the end of the sleeves a bit wider. So in vertex mode, I'm going to select the vertices on the top of the sleeve on both sides of the model. So select a point and then control and select on one side. On the other side, I'm just going to do the same thing. But as I forgot to press shift, I've got to do it again on this side. So we're going to turn on proportional editing by pressing O or by clicking on the little icon thingy here and select connected only. And then we're going to grab the G and Z and we're going to use the mouse button to increase or decrease the size of this circle to make it less stupid looking. That's okay. So now let's just run our simulation again. And that's better. Yep, I think that'll be okay. Not bad at all, actually. Let's have a quick look around the model. Now you can see the shoulders have broken a little bit. And we can fix this by editing our cloth and fiddling about for ages, but I think that'll make this video very long. So I'm not actually gonna do that. But what we will do is make sure that the seams join together properly. So we've already got these vertices selected. We need to select all the other vertices that have got sewing threads on them. So we'll do that. And when we complete, we'll need to add these to a vertex group. It's amazing just how useful vertex groups are. Select the vertex group tab, plus to create a new vertex group and give it a sensible name and assign. I always forget to assign. Okay, now back into object mode and we're going to add a modifier. We're going to add the world modifier, but we're just going to turn it off for now. And then we're going to add our vertex group in here and we're going to select connected and only loose edges. And now let's run the simulation again and watch it build our shirt. And now if we zoom in on our seams you'll see that gap but turning the weld modifier on and increasing the value here it will sew them together i've still got that nasty bit up there but never mind pretend that's not there let me know in the comments if you want me to show you how i fixed that let's add another subdivision surface modifier anyway they never hurt but this is it. This is a model created with sewing. Uh, it's the most satisfying in the end, but it is the most difficult to get right. So now we're going to move on to posing a model that's got clothes on. And we're going to use my brother's model. Here she is, and she has a name that I can't pronounce, but I'll put it on the screen here instead. Now she is already clothed and she's rigged. And we're gonna see what happens when you pose a model that's already got clothes on. Select the rig, go into pose mode, and then select a bone. And move the leg, and it's gone straight through the dress. That's annoying. So what we have to do is attach the clothes to the rig in object mode. Select the dress, shift select the rig and press control P and with empty groups and now select just the dress and in the modifiers add a data transfer modifier. 
move it above the armature modifier and then in here select vertex data and vertex groups and then using the pipette up here for the source select the body of the model so now let's go and pose this select the rig again go into pose mode select a bone and move it and you'll see the dress moves with it now this is a tight dress so you can't push it too far or she will go through it again but um, that's pretty much what we want select another bone and then we'll move it to the right now you can see her leg goes through here because she doesn't have enough geometry and you can also see that little wallety bag thing didn't go with her we can fix both of these in a different way firstly we'll fix the bag thing in the same way as we did before select the bag shift select the rig control p with empty groups and i'll select the bag then we add the data transfer modifier move it above the armature select vertex data and vertex groups and with the pipette select the body again and now that will move with the model but what are we going to do about the leg that went through the clothes even more than we wanted to a simple solution is to select the parts of the body that are poking through the clothes and mask them so that they don't we'll need to go into edit mode and I'll I think I'll turn her into the standard modeling mode as well the blue is getting a little bit distracting so select our model and we go into edit mode and then turn on x-ray mode and I'm going to switch the selector lasso and select everything which is still within the dress as you can see here and then we're going to have to make a vertex group of this lot again now I have a lot of vertex groups on this model already so this is going to be a bit annoying but plus rename our group and assign let's go back to normal solid mode and then we need to go into object mode again and we're going to add a new modifier we're going to add a mask modifier and then down in the mask modifier in the vertex group we will select the one we just created now i have to scroll down through all this lot because there's a lot of them so i'll speed that bit up and you can immediately see it removes everything except the middle but if you press this little icon here it removes everything else it inverts it so now if we pose our model she won't poke through at all pose mode grab this thing again and legs still breaking through but that's just a bit of a refinement but basically she's staying within a dress now and that's all very nice so the workflow for 3D printing a model like this with clothes on is to pose the model using the techniques we looked at here and then when you're happy turn the mask modifier off and if any bits poke through the clothes that you don't like then just go into the sculpting and push them with the snake hook brush into the model it doesn't matter anymore you can't see it if you'd like to see a more detailed video on how to pose models for 3D printing, then click on the banner on the top right. You might also be interested in the one on the bottom left.
I hope this was useful, but please feel free to put comments down below and ask questions. I usually answer them, actually, and I will see you next time.